A few months ago, I was challenged by another YouTuber to a chili grow off. And I've got to say, they've got a massive edge on me because I had major issues and was plagued from the start with these problems. But I'm pleased to say that we are now managed to get them germinated and they are ready to go into their final places. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how I'm going to grow my chilies using an indoor hydroponic system called the Autopot XL. I'm Tony O'Neill and this is UK Year We Grow. And on this channel, we deal with all things gardening, poultry keeping and beekeeping. If you want that perfect garden to relax in or just want to grow your own nutrient dense foods, then start now by clicking the subscribe button and the bell icon to be notified each time we release new content just like this. Now I've grown chilies for years and always had good results, but I've never been challenged before. So to make it fair, I sent Sean some of the seeds that I was using so that we both had the exact same genetics. Now, while Sean stormed ahead, he's now got plants that are over two feet tall. Um, I was plagued with problems. And you saw me sowing the seeds into the wool blocks and they are fantastic things. But I put those seeds then onto a heat mat and what I didn't know was that heat mat was faulty. Around the edges of the heat mat was nice and warm, but the center where the tray was was stone cold. So they took me over six weeks in which to germinate. And even then, the seedlings were very weak and poor. It took me ages to nurse them through, but I can say that they are ready now to pot on. And we still have time. After all, it's only the one fruit I need to be dim with. Now they're ready to pot on, I'm going to put them into their final placings. Now, I've decided to use an uh, indoor hydroponic system called the Autopot XL. And although I have solar here at the allotment garden, I decided I wanted a system that didn't rely on everything else and that was gravity fed. The Autopot system is a gravity fed system. Therefore, it needs no power and no taps. Everything is run from a tank. Now, in my case, a 100 litre tank, and that's gonna provide all of the nutrients and the water that this system is gonna need. Now, before I get a load of messages, I just wanna say that this is not a sponsored video. I've purchased everything that I'm using in this video, and the reason I've purchased it is because the system is really good, especially if you have no power. Now that's out of the way, I'd really love to take you through setting up this entire system so that we can then go and kick Sean's behind. After all, it is only the one heaviest chili or the one longest chili that we need to win this challenge. So the tank and each of these pots need to be on a level base. And this is where I've decided to put it. Now, this was the area that my potting bench used to be. So that had to be moved and we've moved that to the other end of the polytunnel. What I plan on doing here is covering the ground, setting up some slabs so that it's nice and level, and then we set up the tank, and it's simply a case of opening the tank and sliding these rods into the pockets that are provided in order to support the tank. We then set out the six slabs that's also needed for the auto pots themselves to sit on. Now into this tank, there's a grommet that we need to push in, and this is what the pipework will connect to and what supplies the nutrients and the water from the tank. We simply now need to run a line direct from the tank straight away down the middle of the pots that we've placed out. And we can intersect each of these pots by placing in a T-junction or a cross-junction. In this case, we we'll use crosses so that we can continue the main line and we simply then run six mil line off to the autopot system. So we simply continue doing this until we've got all six of the autopots connected. Now the great thing about this autopot indoor hydroponic system is, it's not really indoor, you can use it outdoors as well because it doesn't matter. And the good thing about it is though that you are able to expand it at any time. If I simply want to add more pots, I just buy some more pots and add another cross piece in at the end here and continue adding pots on. And I could take it off in other directions if I want to. I'm not governed to one straight line. As I want my pots level, I'm placing a concrete slab under each of the pots and I'm leveling these off. This way, I know that the system is gonna work perfectly. 
Now that this is done, we can get down to the nitty gritty of setting up the AutoPot XL system. Now that we have these slabs all nice and level, we are able to now place a tray for each of the pots on each slab. Now this is where the water and the nutrients from the tank will come and the pots will then soak up those nutrients. So because this is a gravity fed system. The tank needs to be at least six inches higher than the pots themselves. This is why we are building up the level of the tank. Now this is the auto valve and this is what regulates the water in this system. And it simply sits over this little T shape of plastic in the tray. Now what this does is stops all of movement of the valve from being able to be moved about or damaged. So it sits where it should and it'll work correctly. We just need to check that the two yellow bungs are correctly positioned so that they seal off the flow when required. Now to fit it, we just need to remove this threaded pipe collar, pass the pipe through it, fit the pipe onto the nozzle of the aqua valve and tighten down the collar, holding it tight and in place. Fit this onto the T-shape in the tray and fit on the lid. And the tray is now ready to accept the fluids and the feed later. This is a copper magic root trainer and it's designed to stop the roots getting into the tray. Simply put this copper side down into each pot. Now we need to start to fill the pots with clay pebbles. This needs to be around five centimeters deep and two liters of these pebbles will do the trick. Firstly though, remember to wash these pebbles out because they have lots of dust and clay and this can clog up the system. So you really need to give these pebbles a good swill. Now we need to fill each pot with soil and I have a pre-mixed hydroponic soil made from coir and clay pebbles and I'm going to use this. All we need to do is to fill each pot to around about 15 centimetres below the rim of the pot. Now the stars of the show, the chilies. Now I managed, although I had major issues, to germinate three pablano and one spaghetti. As we said, there's two different challenges going on here, a long and a heavy. So. I've been lucky that I did manage to get them done. However, Sean had an issue germinating his spaghetti, so he was unable to get a plant for that. Now, um, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put those three chilies, which are the pablano and the one spaghetti, and the other two pots are gonna be taken up by chilies as well. And um, one's gonna be a Joe's Long, and the other's gonna be a Hungarian Hot Wax. And they are gonna be nothing to do with this challenge. Okay, so all we need to do now is plant the chilies. So we simply place them into the center of the pot and then fill the pots to layer about five centimeters below the surface of the rim. Now, because I am using coir and clay pebbles in these pots, there's no nutrition in them at all. So earlier on, I filled this tank with water and now I have to add some nutrients. And I'm gonna let that sit for a day or two. These are the nutrients I'm gonna be adding and they typically need one mil of this nutrient to one liter of water. Now, the good thing about this system over an ebb and flow system is that you're able to um, get the pH right and then you haven't got to worry about it again because the water isn't recycled in this tank. Once it's used by the plants, it only takes what it needs and once it's used, that's the end of it. So because that there is no nutrition in the coir and the clay pebbles, while I'm waiting for this system to settle down and everything else, I'll be top watering these with the solution itself and that will see them through until the time that I'm happy that the water is settled in the tank and any sort of chlorination or anything is, is evaporated off. Well, that's it, that's the system set up. And although I have plants with chilies on, these are not the ones. So um, I was a bit unlucky with all the issues I've had. But I do have a leg up over Sean in the fact that I was lucky enough to germinate one of the spaghetti seeds out of all the seeds that I was able to sow. I did send quite a few down to Sean, but he wasn't lucky enough to get one. So because of that, I do have that sort of advantage here. But that was more of a bonus challenge over the main one. So what really interests me is the poblano. Now, Sean has managed to get his plants massive and they're already coming close to fruiting and I am way behind, but I still have plenty of time in which to get these to fruit. And that's all we really need is one fruit, one heaviest chili. 
So I've got a few tricks up my sleeve that maybe Sean doesn't know about. Question of the day, how are your chilies doing this year? Did you have any problems with germination? Let me know in the comments section below. If you've enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. And if you've got value from this video, well, you can subscribe here. And when you've done that, you can continue the journey by viewing one of these videos right here. I'm Tony O'Neill, this is UK Year We Grow, and remember folks, you reap what you sow. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.